All right, guys, welcome to another video, and I'm going to be teaching you about the for loop in this video, pretty much how we can have a huge list, and we can loop through and pretty much do something to one item at a time without having to write code over and over and over again. So you know how in the last couple of videos I showed you guys how to make a list with numbers, pretty much, uh, you know, we did something like that. Well, in this video, I want to spice things up. I'm actually going to be making a list of foods and of course just like before whenever we have a list of strings instead of numbers we put them inside square brackets and of course we need to put every string inside a quotation mark single quotes so we'll say that this is just my grocery list or something and the first item is bacon and this is actually my grocery list believe it or not so I need to buy tuna, running a little low on that. I also need to get some ham. Uh, what was that one other thing I needed? Snossages, and I'm having a party um, tomorrow, so I gotta grab some beef because it's a beef party. So right now we have a huge list of items, of crap that I gotta pick up, pretty much for groceries or just to eat. Now say that I was making a program to print all of these items out one by one. Well, okay, let me do that. print here, print the, okay, so print, oh my god, this is taking forever. Wouldn't it be awesome if there is an easy way to loop through this and write one bit of code to print each item out one by one? <laughs> well, lucky for you guys, there is. It's called a for loop. Now what this does is it basically takes a list and allows you to treat each item individually and do anything you want with it. So since these items are going to change, bacon, tuna, ham, you just can't make uh, five different variables or else that will defeat the purpose. Whoa, I could barely say that, defeat the purpose. There you go, Bucky. So pretty much the first thing you need right after this for loop is a variable. So I'm just going to name my variable F and this is going to be a placeholder for each item. So the first time it loops, F is going to be equal to bacon. The next time, F is going to be equal to tuna. F ham. So <laughs> I just said F ham, like I hate ham or something. But anyways, that's what F does. And then we don't need a bunch of variables. We can just use this variable, and it's equal to a bunch of different items. Pretty handy. So the next thing, and the only other thing you have to write for the beginning of this loop, is what list do you want to loop through? Well, right now we only have one list called foods. So, foods. Now, if you had um, a bunch of lists, then just make sure to change it right there. But basically, um, I mean, this is pretty easy to understand what's going on. It says for F, for each item in foods, and the item is going to be named F. That's what our variable's name is going to be. And then, what do you want to do with it? Well, let's just go ahead and print it out on the screen first and foremost. Now, let me run this and you guys are going to see what's going on. So right now we have bacon, tuna, ham, sausages, and beef. So what it did, obviously one more time, is it looped through foods. And for each item, it treated it as F. And with F, we could have done anything we want to it. We just printed it out on the screen. Simple enough. Loops are freaking easy. So the only other thing that I want to talk to you guys about for now is this. You know in the last couple of tutorials I said if you have an if statement then you put if test up here and then some code after and also with a loop make your loop and then make the code. Well I want to show you guys that you're not only limited to one line of code that you can execute. You can also do something else for each item on a new line of code. So say that not only did we want to print out the name right here but we also wanted to print out how many characters it was so bacon is five tuna is four ham is three so on and so forth so let's do that as well so right under your first print statement add another print statement and make sure that this is indented the same amount if it's right here it's going to be outside the loop so make sure it's indented then it will be part of the loop now, I know I didn't talk to you guys about this function yet, but whenever you want to print out the length of something, the function name for that is LEN. They could have just wrote length, but you know, no one has time to write those extra characters. So pretty much, 
that's how you do it and in the parameters you just have to tell it what you want to get the length of well of course f which is going to be the food so now whenever you run this it goes through your entire list one item at a time and then it says for each item print out the name of that item and then print out the length of that item so pretty sweet so again that saved us a lot of code if we didn't have this loop then we would have to write two lines of code for every single item so instead of ten lines of code we did it in three and this gets even more useful let's say you're uh, going through a list of stock information for the last eighty years well you don't wanna you know write however many thousand lines of code you can just do it really quick and efficiently now the only th other thing I want to mention real quick is this you know how in the last couple of tutorials I showed you guys how to slice up a list well you can do the same thing whenever you're looping so by default when you say for F and foods it's gonna say okay so you want me to go through the entire list start at the beginning stop at the end well you can also loop through um, a slice of that list by putting something like this colon 2 now what this would mean is okay for foods loop through the items start at the beginning and stop at position number 2 so it's pretty much just going to do bacon and tuna right there so again most of the time whenever you're making loops you're just gonna loop through the entire thing but I also wanted to uh, um, tell you guys that option just in case you ever need to loop through a certain portion or slice of the list so I know that was kind of a lot to take in but pretty simple once you break it down into pieces and uh, finally start to understand it so for now thank you guys for watching don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video